We're good. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. Big episode today. Going to get into a lot of different things as we talk about Pokemon, card shows, all sorts of different things. We've got latest launch later. We've got some stuff to shop in this episode, so lots to talk about. Wanted to mention, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, make sure you check that out. Got a lot of great feedback from some of our listeners on that episode. We had Adam Lefko on talking all things uh, sports cards or cards in general. It was kind of a state of the hobby discussion, so he was great. Encourage you guys to check that out. Also had a giveaway, which we posted on social for these incredible Charizard can't tear an ACL shirt. Shout out to Jason for uh, for getting those done for us. So we got two winners on Instagram. We had Vintage Pokemon Hunter. And on Twitter, we had at Up North Cards 17 So we already reached out to each of you for uh, details on how to get you that t-shirt. But Ty, Lou, I figured uh made sense to start this one with a uh, kind of uh, more somber thoughts, but uh, the greatest, probably one of the, the best hosts is the best host I've seen. Alex Trebek uh, recently passed away, so figure we ought to at least bring that up. Thought that was a pay rather some respect on the man. yeah, pay some respect. That's probably the word I'm looking for there. But saw so he had just passed away on uh on Sunday. So battle in stage four pancreatic cancer, I believe. Um, but 37 years is the jeopardy host. So yeah. Shouts, shouts to him. Uh, I've actually been watching more jeopardy in the last six months than probably in the last 10 years combined. And it's been, uh, it's been fun, but talk about it. Yeah. I feel like everyone that I know this weekend was like, yeah, I feel like growing up, I would like walk upstairs and my parents would be watching Jeopardy and their dad or mom would be like pretending to know all the answers. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, that must be like a very common theme like throughout America. So it's kind of, yeah. Crazy. Or just the celly when you get one, right? Yeah. yeah like yeah. when you know it early and they might even get it wrong. And you're like, I, they could have been on this show the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Also white man can't jump. Wasn't that a big Jeopardy thing where the wife, was was try to get on what uh Jeopardy? Yep. Lou, watch the show. How dare you? I've actually never seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. The movie know, White Man Can't Jump. I know right, what White Man Can't Jump keep... is. Got it. Well, if you've seen the movie, I had not a... seen the movie, so that's the answer. I got it. All right, so right. If you've seen no, the movie, I, I haven't seen the movie. I just know what it got is. Got it. So neither of you got it. All right. So all due respect, to Alex Trebek, you should both watch White Man Can't Jump. We'll move on to the next topic, which has to do a little bit with Ryan about your weekend. Last I checked, we've been uh, there's a gentleman that uh, you're friendly with in Kentucky, I believe, that has an epic all time UK cards. I see you visited him, and then you might have went by a shop. Love for you to talk just a little bit about the cards weekend that you had. Yeah, it was a rather busy weekend. So drove down late Thursday to Lexington uh, to be there basically most of the day Friday. Uh, so the, it's called uh, Kentucky Roadshow Shop. It's in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky basketball cards on Instagram. His name's Jimmy. He opened up a, a store recently. One of the, n- probably the n- one of the nicest people on, on earth, just a all around terrific guy, but has amassed probably one of the cooler, if not the coolest Kentucky basketball collections, uh, including game worn stuff, cards, etc. So we were down there. He actually had PJ Washington in for a signing. It's their opening week. They opened up on last Wednesday. Um, so we had PJ Washington in, got to get some stuff signed by him. Could not have been a nicer guy. It's really a really a great guy. Then uh, left there Friday and ended up in Ship Shawana, Indiana for a card show all the way north in Indiana, north of Fort Wayne, uh, about six hours away from there. And that was basically most of the day Saturday. It was actually a really good turnout. Uh, I hadn't been to a card show in a couple months. Obviously not it, locally. They're not as, you know, prevalent as they were pre-COVID. So this is a good opportunity for us to support a friend, drive over there to that show and set up. It's actually the first show I'd set up. How big? How many times? There were probably, without looking, 65 tables. Okay. And how was your game? Were you on your game? We were we were well prepared. Yeah. I'm we were we were well prepared. And what does that mean for you going into a card show? What is well prepared? What are things you're thinking about? Well in terms of of in terms of buying, I don't really have a, a strategy per se. 
again, I, every single day I, you know, I own a retail store. So every day, like I see different things. I'm, I'm in the market a, a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a good idea of what I'm looking for, what things sell for that kind of thing, just being in it as long as I have. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of buying, I don't really need that per se. Um, it was more of like setting up. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to take inventory that was already out for sale in the shop and deplete the shop for the weekend. So I spent, you know, last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday preparing new singles to take with us. So that was mm-hmm. the mo. That's what I mean by the preparedness uh, aspect. How many, of how, it. how many singles do you believe you had in inventory going into the going into the day? We took uh, six dollar boxes, a quarter box, five ten cent boxes. We took a four row box for baseball, basketball, and football singles. We took a four row box that was soccer, Pokemon, WMEA, and racing cards. What was the most uh, expensive card you sold? A twenty two hundred dollars stuffed curry rookie. What uh, PSA ten? Nine five. What was that? Nine five. Nine five tops. What was the hottest card at the show? What was Uh, a lot of the chatter? Give me a little quantity. Basketball. Basketball. Basketball is back. Probably best. Prison basketball. Uh, just a, a lot of things. Basketball didn't didn't move as much. Football definitely not a lot of baseball. It was it was a lot of basketball for sure. Hmm. So yeah, I got to go there. Got to buy a lot. Got to sell a lot. Meet some some people. Um, Lou, why the why the hmm? Was uh, that no, like a, just, oh surprise. No, it was the it, yeah. It was like the surprise. Basketball still remains the most important thing. And I think as we're getting back to December here, we're gonna talk about basketball more later. But I think we're in for another big jump as uh basketball not a big jump i don't want to say that but we're back to like yeah a little bit more of a hotter period as basketball returns but the thing i took away from this weekend is as people become more accustomed to wearing masks and life starts to transition that way more the the card shows aren't are not going to slow down they're gonna they're gonna ramp up in 2021 um again i'm going to the one in dallas this weekend i'm not sure if, if anyone else listening will be going but uh, the big show in Allen, Texas, uh, this weekend will probably be the biggest card show of the year. Seems to be the closest thing to the national, which got canceled. Um, but that that it seems to be set up nicely for 2021 for there to be a a good amount of shows next year, and hopefully a live card talk recording at the national in Chicago in 2021. Love That's it. something to look forward to. Can't wait. Can't wait. But Lou mentioned basketball, a little surprised by that. We, as we transition to the next topic, sounds like have a 99% sure we're going to start basketball on December 22nd. Is that what we're getting? That's what it's looking like. I believe the NBA PA, all the representatives of the team, the voting has passed from their side. Um, I think that they were going to move forward. I don't think there's been an official league official announcement yet, but I think we're there and it's crazy. I mean, we, uh, we were doing this show before I believe they really even, you know, the bubble we were on here talking about the bubble getting announced, you know, that run up Devin Booker's eight game run. Um, December 22nd is like tomorrow. You know, I saw something that showed, I, I believe the off season will be ha- is the shortest sports off season ever by I think like 20 days maybe. And then, I believe it's almost half of the previous shortest NBA offseason. Wow. That will be very interesting to see the impact on. Well, uh, didn't LeBron say, or isn't like the story that like none of the big guys are going to play at first. So they're all just going to sit out for a so while. I think yeah. that's where it's at right now. What they're trying to figure out is like, how do they go through that? Because I think you're, you're in a damned if you do damned, if you don't situation, we've started yep. to see over the last couple of years in the league, you know, these, just like I'm gonna take this game off uh, off a of back to back, like I'm load just management. Not, uh, yeah, load management. I'm just not gonna play. Um, do they ramp that up? Like, does LeBron play one of every three games over the first eight weeks of the season, or does he not play at all? Which is worse? I mean, I don't think you start like uh, his season was also all really long. considered. Yes, but. December 22nd comes around. The Lakers play on Christmas and LeBron doesn't play. That means that's preseason and the league hasn't actually started for for real fans. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those things where like it's going to be like a nudge nudge wink wink situation like LeBron play the big like the big stars play the big games but other than that you guys can hang out for a little while. Yeah, like we're going to do like national TV and then the rest Yeah, cuz like ultimately they can't force them to play, but I'm sure they could probably talk to them a little bit, but I mean LeBron I James just, Good. 
LeBron James also left during a season to train in Miami. Like, isn't that the same LeBron James? Yeah. Yeah. Like when LeBron quit during the middle of a season, to, like train. I mean, like when Lakers, 2018. No, this was like a while ago. Like LeBron. No, you're making like, that up. But <laughs> the larger point is, I think we're in a situation here where. Uh, there's a little bit of opportunity just for like to get back to cards, right? Yeah, uh, we've started. We've started to see the rise of the tray cards. Uh, we started to see the rise of the KD cards. Shout out to me for those two predictions for hottest NBA cards. Um, and uh, I think these guys who weren't in the bubble that were sort of out of the mix and out of the public, uh, out of the public eye for a while, mm-hmm. uh, Steph, Clay, Kyrie, those those guys, I think you're going to have a really big opportunity here to jump back up into the consciousness, and you could see some big gains on those cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, something to look out for, I think. Yeah, Kyrie, I think is a, is a great one to talk about. Um, I'm not going to bring up my guy, but you know, I'm thinking about him. But in general, we know basketball coming back for that you know stretch run in December, plus holiday season buying, plus. Um, no other sports like slow. There's been a bit of sports fatigue, but in general, it'll be exciting for that to to ramp back up. And especially with the Dallas show, I think it'll just prove more that that basketball is is here and basketball is here to to stay. But on that note, you'll also get isn't it the first week in December that NFL Prism is coming out? Right, December December second. Yeah, I want to jump around a little bit, but that I feel like that. And I'm jumping from NBA over to that, but this early December holiday buying of cards feels like all things considered that product can and will be huge. I feel like people hold off on Mosaic a little bit because they know that's coming down the pipeline. Before, also, we, like Mosaic. before we continue, uh, in 2015, LeBron James helped turn the Cleveland Cavaliers season around with a two-week break in Miami early in January. Prior to the break, James and the Cavs looked out of sorts and he looked less explosives. He went to Miami to rest his aching knee and back, leaving the Cavs for a seven-game period, which they went one and six. Got it. Okay, so, so he did go to Miami. But what was During your, the middle of the season, what, I was just saying. Like, what was this, your point? It, it's not really a surprise with LeBron. He's going to play when he wants and do, not play when he doesn't want to. I know, yeah. but that's in the middle of the season, and he said he had a bad knee. This is like this the is start like I'm just of the tired season. and I don't want to play. Like, uh, this, is six years, this is six years later. After he's gone, had yeah, the longest he's, NBA season he's ever he had. He was in Cleveland. Now he's in the coming back off a chip with the Lakers. Yeah, right. I don't. I, I know what you're saying, but I think it's a little weird. It's weird to be like this was the longest season ever when, like, all things considered, they were home. He was home working out for a few months. Like it wasn't the longest. All season I'm ever. saying is, if LeBron James has to sit out a month of this season to play longer, you know, another he year will. later, yeah, I agree. I'm I all agree. for it. I agree, but. I think it's different in the middle of the season versus like, you know, the the campaign marketing run up promo to like the NBA is back yet LeBron. Yeah, and like, then they start. Oh. Yeah, and the biggest player in the league isn't playing. It's yeah. kind of like, eh. All and right, then so KD Ty, drops thirty seven. Ty, I actually, uh, I had a listener who's a customer of mine come in this week, uh, this this past weekend, and had mentioned to me. Uh, hey, I want to get more into soccer, mm-hmm. but I don't know where to find like the upcoming guys. So who mm-hmm. are the guys that like people don't know about, right? So for me, being mostly football, you know how I find out who's going to be good? I watch college football because that'll tell you a year later or two years later or three years later, this guy's going to be good. Then when they, you know, you watch their progression, they go to the NFL and then you have a shot to buy their stuff. With with fo- with with soccer. Uh, where where do you look for guys that are going to be good, right? They, they don't just pop out of thin air. They come from somewhere. Like, how, yep. how, how do you do that? So, I mean, the, the, the short answer, like you just said, I just watch college football, right? Like, there's um, – the way that I do it is by paying attention to the game because I love the game and I like following it and, you know, understanding the nuances of clubs, you know, the countries – how you play for a club and then you also play for your country team. And when those things are happening, just signals Two great platforms to follow is at four, three, three on Instagram, as well as rising ballers on Instagram. But this, this is the most tried and true way that I would say that's out there and is actually great. We've had a lot of conversations around this and it's a, it's a product 
that I'm going to that's show on my screen, but it's sofifa.com. S O F I F A.com. And one of the reasons why I do believe this soccer card market is going to continue to explode. And uh, the, the, the gentleman that asked you about this, mm-hmm. is he older middle? Like where's what's his makeup? Does he have kids? Uh, I'm not sure if he has kids. I'm going to guess. The reason I bring it up is because there's a lot of fathers right now that their sons are either playing like town league soccer, soccer at a youth level is huge. And they're either following European soccer or they might be playing FIFA. And like we've talked about FIFA nowadays is all about FIFA ultimate team and these cards and packs. And so packing players. So there's this website called sofifa.com. That is a great tool and i'm going to share it here chrome tab so fifa so you can come on this site and what this is is this is a database and it updates as the cards do which i believe is something like twice a week uh during the week uh for fifa ultimate team but if you just go here so fifa.com this is the home page and it will show you like the most talked about player so what i did is i, I just kind of did columns here and you can do overall rating. I think you can do it by hits, total stats. But I, a great way is come in here and you can do age and you can do potential and you can apply it and then sort by potential. And this is FIFA stats of potential that they are going to get to. FIFA is has now they do they spend more than any game on data in terms of uploading players they have just about every player in the world and the thing that's scary and daunting about soccer a lot of times is each country i mean these players are coming out of nowhere they could be playing for small clubs um you know mbappe now monaco can be seen as a small club or not a small club but relatively speaking is not this great big behemoth of a brand where a player would be coming out and they don't have drafts in soccer. Whereas in American sport, it's like college. Then there's this whole media pipeline of the top 10 guys in the NFL draft or the NBA draft. And you get to know these players and everyone understands them at the same time. But this, what you'll see is why I brought up Monaco. Mbappe was in Monaco before he, you know, he's a kid from Paris, but Monaco gave him his first look when he was really young. He signed with Monaco when he was like 13 years old, right? He went over there, he played well, and then Paris came calling and signed him to a huge deal. But he's only 21 now, so you can go down this list a little bit and uh, you can start to see like these players have 91, 92 potential in FIFA at young age, meaning that they have the potential to be great. And to the question of how do you find out about these a lot of these players, Lotoro Martinez plays in Inter Milan, which if you're really paying attention to soccer, you know what Inter Milan is. Inter Milan is a historic club in Italy. But if you're just trying to figure out some up-and-coming bets that you can make in the soccer card market and you're not a soccer fanatic, you probably don't know much about about, uh, La Toro Martinez or Inter Milan for that matter. But now if you take a look and you're on this site and you're like, hmm, you're thinking about because the Euro Cup, we've talked a lot if you've listened to this podcast – Euro Cup last summer got moved to this summer. and But he, I apologize because he's South America, so he's not going to play in the Euro Cup, but he's going to play in the World Cup. And Messi and Argentina, again, if you think about branding, is a young cat that is going to be a striker alongside Messi who's going to get a lot of airtime in the World Cup. You know, those are the types of things when I think about prospecting. Oh, this dude's probably going to be a young stud on Argentina. Then you can go and Google Argentina, you know, international team it where does he sit is he a starter okay he's 22 might be a little a little older on the old side Ansu Fati who we talked about so this is a great place and also because of how FIFA is dominated so much by these cards FIFA ultimate team and packing guys that this site is constantly updated because there's a market around these cards digital cards that there's a lot of very quick and handy information so I would say that. So FIFA is a great place to hmm. find talent that otherwise it, it, the soccer world, there's so much information. There's so many players that you can really drill down by potential and age here. Yeah. I also feel like that's actually a really interesting time because then they have like the team of the weeks and I know they have like the team of the seasons and yep. all that stuff. So once you, even if you don't play the game, which I like, 
I am tangentially aware of FIFA. I used to play it. I don't play it as much anymore. But like, if you know the guys are going to be in the team of the seasons, all that, like those are going to be the guys that are going to be coming out of the packs that people are chasing. So that's just a lot more awareness on those guys. Mm-hmm. But Ty, I also like your other point. This looks super, super helpful. So, and this is new to me. But I also like your other point about like, hey, this account on this account on Instagram. We've talked about that before in terms of like other topics. Like if you're new to the card game, how do you learn the card game, right? Mm-hmm. You follow the people that, talk about the card game, right? Like follow people that seem to know what they're talking about. And you'll learn a lot by just watching what Mm -hmm. they post, what they talk about, what they're looking at. Like you can learn a lot that way. So I'm, I'm really big on that advice. I also think that, um, the soccer market and world like seem one, because it's so young, there was that stat that came out that was floating around Jason. I'm not sure. Maybe you can pull it up. I think heroes for sale might've posted it about soccer. the, the, Baseball still has, is dramatically the most graded PSA cards. It was kind of like a chart. Soccer was by far the least of the major sports. Um, so it's young and the hobby's just getting going in terms of new product that's going to be coming out. We were just talking about when the next Panini Prism um, because you also have international cards. The licenses are all over the place. So the, the understanding of the true rookies, that market's now going to all start to get solidified for new guys that are coming along. But also you do see a, a a lot of chatter around younger players every year in soccer 17 six sometimes 16 but really 17 18 19 that's kind of like the sweet spot but then a lot of times you'll see big hype will happen because they have transfer windows so twice a year the transfer window opens and that brings so much media chatter of players being sold because even when you're on a contract much more likely will if a player all of a sudden becomes amazing at a club such as Monaco, they have a player like Kylian Mbappe. They, they can sell him for a hundred million dollars, and that's revenue to them as a club. And that's pretty much a buyout clause of the contract. Can't really do that in NBA or NFL. You have to trade for assets. You can't just go in and buy a great player, right? You know, bottom. You know, the Atlanta Hawks want to make a lot of money. Let, let's just sell Trey Young. Doesn't happen. Right, because there's just not these free markets around these players. I mean, could you it's, imagine if EP, like if the NBA or NHL or NFL got the same system that EPL has, where like teams are relegated? Like, yeah, you think well, Jared Jones is ever going to get relegated? The, yeah, no, but, but but that's that's why you also can't sell a player because sure, the, no, I'm just because you know then it's like all right, well let me the, you're going to have two types of teams. One's that like are going to make no no profit spend all you know there's no caps in soccer yeah, yeah. no and i was just so all that but the thing is around 16 17 18 year old kids that get sold from a small club to a club like paris the hype around that card will start to go crazy everyone then thinks they're going to be huge all of a sudden they're eight, 17 years old they're going to a new environment biggest club in the world and all of a sudden they don't perform for 18 months because they're get young getting their foot on the ground getting in with a new manager everything and then 18 months later, so there's these waves of young kid that goes from this, you know, small club that was less competition that he was the best player at to this huge club. In that hype window, there will be big sale off of cards. And then the person gets forgotten about for 18 months and then comes back around. I'm seeing it right now a bit with Joao Felix, our guy, Lou. He went, you know, he, he came from... Um, I'm trying to, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a It's blank. a super small club in like Portugal. Uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank. But then he gets sold to Atletico Madrid. And there's Valencia, a lot of right? Jazz. It was Valencia. I, believe, I think it might have been. I think it might have been. And I think you're right. And gets sold. And during the sale window, he sold for, I think he sold for like 80 mil as a 17 or Benfica was a, was a, was a squad. Benfica, there you go. Um, and a lot of hype. Price goes up. And then he goes there and doesn't perform that well. New manager. They're asking a lot of him. He's got to learn new ways. It's quiet for 12, 14 months. Card cools off. All of a sudden, now he's on fire, ripping with them. So like that, I just wanted to explain why sometimes these things happen. It's not just like, did they get drafted and then they're not good? And then you got to re-sign their contract. Ty, you know what I just thought about? And I had this hadn't come to me until now. And this is probably just my ignorance. Was Mbappe just like the perfect storm yes. of what can happen for a young player? And then people are now trying to apply that to other things, and it's not even close to the same. Yeah. Yes. Look, I mean, generational in the sense of comes onto a France team, that's great. 
young kid gets put in playing for an incredibly popular club. Yeah. Yeah. goes to Paris in a world where Paris also isn't the premier league or um, from a competition standpoint, you could say the French league isn't the German league or the Italian league, less competition. So stats were good. There's a lot. There's also a lot of cloud on PSG for sure. I mean, but, but, but to your point of the perfect situation in that, neither Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo have won a World Cup. It is so hard. It is so hard to play even in a World Cup finals. You can yeah, be great because you also have to have a cut. Like you have to realize it's not easy to put together that squad. So then as a, I believe he was 18 to not only play on a team, get experience at 18 in the World Cup, be one of the best guys on the team because their team was so dominant and he was a fast right striker, right wing striker type combo, but then score in a final right as the whole car market's getting going and soccer yeah. picking up and all that. Yes. That, I think that's a very important thing. I had really never even – I knew all that, and we knew – like we've discussed all that. Yeah, and so that put it like that. Martinez playing alongside Messi is a real factor, whereas in mm-hmm. the NBA, you know, five guys, it's – we talk about the second man on the squad. Like NBA isn't marketing, you know, the third man off the bench. Like that's not mm-hmm. how they roll. But in a squad of 11, you can have three or four dominant guys, and it helps you, Right. Now, we know Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, but Portugal is a very, very, very good side. And they're set up extremely well for both the Euro Cup and the World Cup. Joao Felix being the guy right next to Ronaldo, assisting him and scoring goals because Portugal is going to get a lot of airtime because it's Ronaldo's last hurrah, matters. Hmm. That's very interesting. I just Whereas took Holland, a personal turn on soccer. Yeah, Holland, we can speak about Holland, who as a talent, unreal. Unreal. He's proven time and time. I mean, he is the real deal. But they're not going to do anything, right? But it, yeah, they're, he's like, playing, yeah. they're not going to. No, like yeah. they they will not. So, but so then, so then that so now that gives me some some not ammo, but like that puts some credence against what I've been saying. Where like people, I think a lot of people are assigning the messy the messy blueprint to Holland, and that's not going to happen. Like it's just not. But this well, isn't like this is like just saying Connor this. McDavid is going to be exactly the next Gretzky exactly. And it's this like, is like everybody wanting to be Mike Trout or everybody trying to be Patrick. Yeah, Mahomes. but like, I think there's a this lot is across every single sport. We've seen we see this all the time. Yeah, yeah, and I but I think in the the quote unquote youth of the soccer market, uh, there's a lot of people who are trying to apply that to every single card, where it's a little bit different in soccer, in basketball, or in football, or in baseball, or in hockey. I don't I mean, think the international thing. aspect matters a lot in soccer, in my opinion. And I you agree. Don't have that in the other sports. I agree. Meaning they don't leave. Like right now in soccer, this week, if you're if you follow Premier League, the all the players that play for Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, these big clubs, Paris, wherever, Dortmund, Holland is leaving Dortmund right now and going to practice with his home club, mm-hmm. like for another team. It's yeah, like if USA, a like mid-season, they just had USA basketball. And, or, mm-hmm. or, yeah, and whoever goes and plays for Italy, like, mattered to their card. Hmm. Not happening. Hmm. Is there something, I mean, this is... Which happens a little bit, like, making the USA basketball team matters a bit for Americans, in my opinion. A it little bit, another, not yeah. nearly as much as it would matter. Something like this, though. Correct, but it could matter a little bit. That's like they, people they were like talking about what's the name. I met from the from the Duke squad. Oh, so was Christian Leitner. Christian Leitner. <laughs> <laughs> it mattered for later. It mattered. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So I hope that was uh, some valuable soccer footy. A I, uh, I mess hmm. around uh, at proper football is an account we run on Instagram. Uh, at football, F U T B O L on TikTok is one that we have, but always hit me up on Twitter, Ty Schmidt 5 to chat footy. All right, so let's get into Stump the Shop. Again, Stump the Shop is brought to you by eBay. So Ty, Lou, tell me any uh, anything going on in your world? Is it time for a team meeting now? Like, no, what- there'll be no, there'll be no team meeting. I made a sale. Uh, I'm you sending Tyler. Yeah, I'm sending Tyler the link right now. I sold a Pokemon card. And before people get worried about Pokemon, the reason I sold this card is because I'm now 9x on this card. 
Um, I bought a Meowth. I'm sitting at the toilet right now. I bought oh, a yeah. Meowth Jungle First Edition. Um, back in I want to say it was May. Jungle really started to go. Yeah, it all it all went crazy. Go ahead. Can we check the dates of Card Talk? I just want to make sure that's within the guidelines. Yeah, we are we are not going to do that. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Settle down. Um, so I yeah, so I bought that card for thirty bucks, thirty five bucks. I just looked it up back in back then. Ten. Um, yeah, PSA ten, nineteen ninety nine Pokemon game Jungle. Thirty five dollars. It nearly cost that to grade it. So that was a thing, right? That that was part of my original thought. Was like, wait, these like it was part of my original thesis of Pokemon. We've gone to it time and time again, but I'll just go one more time. Meowth is a very popular character in the Pokemon world. Uh, and it didn't make sense. It, the, the thought, the reason it was like priced like that then was because it was jungle and it was a secondary set and no one really cared about it, etc. cetera. Uh, but it didn't make sense to me at the time. So I grabbed it. Uh, I had it listed on eBay for 300 bucks. So almost a 10 X. Uh, and I took an offer of 275 for it. So that has been shipped. It is gone. Uh, I would have loved to hold it, but just in my mind, I'm like, I can't, it's hard to, it's hard for me to turn down yeah. nine X on a card in a few months. So, yep. I took, uh, Lou brought it up originally in terms of, Oh, Hey, let's, let's grade cards. So when we talked about that, I ended up recently purchasing a, uh, Jalen Hertz XRC. Um, We've, we've mentioned it before on the show. I, I mentioned it, I think, last week or the week before about like my strategy for the last couple, last couple weeks of this where do some of the young quarterbacks get a shot? You know, we, we showed the clip where, you know, I mentioned, hey, Gardner Minshew's not doing a whole lot there. Winless is, you know, Mike Lennon's the backup. Is he going to get a shot? No. Okay, well, what about Jake Lutton, the quarterback from Oregon State? Sure enough, Jake Lutton comes out. Actually didn't look too bad. Um, I don't think they ended up winning, but didn't look too bad in his, his game. Um, I, I wonder if Wentz is the guy that gives up a shot to, to Jalen Hurd. I know there's a lot of injuries on that team, but Wentz has struggled in a lot of games this year. And um, The really thing about putting Wentz on the bench? I'm, I'm not sure. I just took a flyer on it at this point. It's just the that division's terrible. Wentz hasn't mm-hmm. looked amazing. I've watched a couple of the Eagles games. That he doesn't really look that good. Mm-hmm. Um, so took a shot on a, on an XRC. I actually sent it in. I sent it five day, um, got the card back and it actually got a PSA 10. Um, so probably going to hold that oh, one. Yeah. How yeah, long did the, the five day turnaround take you? Three weeks. Nice. So, um, cost more, but get it back quicker. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Took a shot on that. Probably not going to sell it right away, but it's one of those things. If I said it 20 day, we might not have it till the very end and you risk not having it to flip on, on the segment. So wanted to send it five day to at least have a shot to sell it. So if for some reason Wentz goes down with an injury, Wentz gets benched, Hertz comes in and plays like Wildcat or you know something like that, just having the ability to sell it is key. So it not being off at grading. Got it back, PSA 10. We'll see what happens. But at some point, I would be hard-pressed to believe that the Eagles don't give Hurts some sort of look, right? Like, are you comfortable going into next year with Wentz? Not sure. That's why I think Tua got a shot, right? Is people are like, hey, you know, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick looks good, but Ryan Fitzpatrick isn't your long-term answer. No different than Mike Lennon's not the long-term answer for for the Jaguars. So... If you're not going to win the Super Bowl this year and you're not going to compete for a playoff spot, do you – Eagles can't compete for a playoff spot, just to be clear. But do you let the the young guy at least show what they've got because you don't know what if they're going to be good or they're not going to be good before you go into next year's class? Same thing with Jacob Eason, right? Philip Rivers – Because they're not good enough? N- no, because they're, they're, they're time – like either – yeah, either they're not good enough or their time left isn't a lot. Like Philip Rivers it. in Indy – probably doesn't have a ton of time left. Yeah. Right. That's safe to say. Yeah. He's got, a, you know, a lot of kids. Yeah. He's got other things in life he wants to, wants to do. So is Eason the guy? Exactly. Is Eason the guy? Are you going to give him a shot to play before you go into next year's draft saying, Hey, we either need to draft a quarterback or Jacob Eason is potentially the future. Wentz, it's a little different story. He hasn't looked amazing this year. 
if Peterson's going to stay around, is Wentz the guy you're comfortable going into next season with, or do you want to see what you have in Hurts to see what that looks like? So we'll see. I may not do well on it, may do great on it, but young QBs, all it takes is one game, right? Anybody will tell you in this, if a guy gets in, everybody immediately wants their stuff just to see what happens, what could be, right? We talk about FOMO. If I have that Jalen Hurts, I feel pretty good that if he does get it, just some shot to shine and does something, I mean, honestly, even if he doesn't do anything, just one game of uh, of being able to play does a lot to somebody's cards. So major in a major way. Yeah. I mean, again, riskier yeah, play for sure. What's uh, I mean, Tua had a, a weekend. So absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they, they look good. Do they end up winning? Uh, do they beat the Cardinals? I think so. But Ty, just for, just for some perspective real quick, what can you pull up? Uh, or I could probably do it. The thing I think about it like this is a Hertz XRC, I think cost me, Two hundred and ten dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see what's a who's the who's the worst selling of the three? Burrow, Tua, or Herbert? Who sells the least, Lou? Probably Tua, Tua, Tua Burrow, or, Her- or Herbert? Yeah, who's gonna sell the it's least? Tua. Tua. Okay. So right now, so a Hertz cost me two hundred, two hundred ten bucks, something like that. The last XRC of Tua sold for seven seventy. And there's a PSA 10 up for 2,500 oboe. And there's one up for two grand. So I'm not saying he's going to sell for half of that. But if you told, if if it got announced Thursday, Jalen Hurts was going to start for the Eagles, that card's going to $500 immediately. Right? So it low risk, high reward. I just, yeah. I like it. I like it. Long shot, you know, but. Gotta, gotta take your chances. It's yeah, not exactly. that much of a long shot, to be honest. Like, it's a really good idea. But, but is it like the way I think about it? Four years ago, Wentz was the number two pick in the draft. If he didn't get hurt, he would have won the MVP a couple of years ago. Yeah. Now, now you're talking. I mean, I, it's what have you done for me lately? I understand that, but just a little wow, risky. A Burrow XRC did nine hundred raw. Yeah, they sell for almost thousand dollars. It's crazy. Anyway. Big card. So that is all we got for Stump the Shop this week. Again, Stump the Shop is brought to you by eBay, your number one stop for sports cards and memorabilia. All right, guys, last little segment today. Latest launch, so the upcoming releases for this week. We've got Prism Draft Picks Basketball. We've got the Choice product and then the, the Fast Break. So Hobby came out last week. This version will be Choice, where it's just, again, a couple cards, typically serial numbered refractors, just a less of the fluff, right? The rookies, the inserts, that kind of stuff. And then the the Fast Break is going to be those disco parallels where they're like the bubble refractors. You'll have those similar version to Hobby, but the demand on the bubble or the disco refractors is not as high as the Hobby versions. Um, so you've got that. You've got Illusions. I think it's Illusions Football. I'm confirming this now. But Illusions Football. I remember last year it was like a five hit per box type deal. So a lot more hits in this. Probably going to be a little bit more expensive than some of the recent releases like Phoenix, Certified, uh, Absolute. Like those products were on release day. But um, it's more of a mid-tier product. Yes. Yes, it is. Mm. Um literally probably right in the middle of the middle tier products. Not like Lou would say impeccable is a high end mid tier product. Mm. Illusions is right in the middle. The five hits helps. <clears throat> and then we also have um, vivid voltage. Ty, I don't know if you and Lou want to talk about that, but um, vivid voltage comes out this week and it looks like some of the pre-orders are, um, are doing pretty well compared to what some products start out as. Um, I think booster box is around 160 pre-order if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So I believe someone will someone will correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe this has the fat Pikachu in it, which people are yep. hyped on. Yeah. Gotcha. This is news to me. So I'm love. Yeah, it's it. got it's got a V Max fat Pikachu. Yep. Gotcha. How and- will that compare to Charizard? 
in terms of resale. Yeah. Yeah. What's it going to sell for? Is it a fifty dollar card? Is it a two hundred dollar card? Is it a five hundred dollar card? It's probably like a hundred and twenty five dollar card. I I think that no matter what wax because of what's happening on Twitch and uh, people opening Pokemon right now, the demand in general. I think the Pokemon wax is a good good game to be in if you are quick and consistent a lot of what we talked about last week with Lefko. like if you buy this and are paying attention on a daily basis to what's happening i think you will be able to make some good money off of flipping it as sealed wax a rainbow uh v max went for 200 bucks and those will probably settle down once more gets released yeah so like about 100 ish but ty there are some uh other ones on here, I think, worth mentioning for release this week. I know we like talking about uh, sort of the odds and ends products here, the ones that don't get the major hobby love. We've mentioned WNBA Prison before. Yeah, um, which you picked up one of the INSQs? Yeah, a gold. Walked into my shop. Someone walked into your shop. They they pack pulled it? They hit it in a break. And sold it to you for what? Uh, I traded it, gave up trade, and gave up cash. So... What I don't want to get into that specifics, car? but for for perspective, there has been two completed sales: one at twenty eight eighty and one at three thousand. Nice. I think it's a huge card. I like it. Um. Yeah. Nice. That's a good pickup yeah. by you. One I'm just gonna sit on and we'll see what happens with. Yep. But other things this week: tops major league soccer and mm. national treasures racing. Interesting. NT racing. NT I fire. love a good racing product. So that's, that's interesting. Fire. What are the patches? Is it just like from the suit? Which are probably tire, the most suit, car. Tire? Possible. They do the tire? No way. I'm assuming they typically have. I've got- I need to find out. Don't go anywhere. Let's keep talking. I need to know what's going on in National Treasure Soccer. I know I have to leave Matt, but yeah. I don't have to leave that bad. I need to know what's going on here. NT Racing with the bubble with the Daryl Wallace pickup. 2020 National Treasure Racing cards. Go GTS. Um, and what was the other one you said, Ry? Tops Soccer. MLS. MLS. Yep. Caden Clark. I like the Caden Clark pay. I think okay. he's going to be a stud. Caden All right. So there's no, there's no, you were wrong about the tires. That's so upsetting. I got excited <laughs> about the tires. But they do have the, like, there's a, like a Haley Deegan, a Haley Deegan uh, Stars and Stripes RPA here. That's pretty cool with like the monster patch on it. So that's probably cool, actually, because it has like the different brands that they have. And if you can get like a, a strong patch, that's kind of yeah. dope. And again, we don't talk about it a ton, but there is a new Yu-Gi-Oh release, Yu-Gi-Oh Maximum Gold. So if any of our followers want to reach out to us on Twitter, would love to know some more about that. And yep, I was going to say, I want to put a challenge out. Masters, the Masters is this weekend. I'm wearing my Masters hat. If you tweet at Card Talk Pod with your Masters pick, you've listened to this whole way. If you pick the right winner, we're going to send you a Charizard won't tear an ACLT. Well, if there's a lot of ra- winners, we'll randomize them and pick one, send one person to win a t-shirt. Can I just jump back into the National Treasures thing real quick? Yes. There's a box of NT racing for $400. Yeah, that's what pre-order cost is. Hmm. You in that on that? Be, that, could be, that could be like a little gift to myself, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I'm feeling good. I've had a good year in cards. Want to have some fun. I think you should NT, pick it up. NT Racing. Let's do we it. We can do an IG talk, live. Talk break. Okay, great. All I'm right. going to strongly consider that. That's all we got for now, guys. See you next week. Peace.